Hey everybody. What a beautiful day it is out here. I'm going to be going live with Karen Ramsey today. Look where I am. Look at that. Can everybody hear me and see me all right? I'm never quite sure about my internet, so if you guys can let me know that all is good in the comments, that would really help. But yes, super healthy raw today, Karen Ramsey. Aw, thank you. You're beautiful too, and I'm so happy you're here with us. I'm going to bring on Karen Ramsey today. She is a raw vegan with an incredible journey and I can't wait to interview her today on her healing journey. Of course, I brought my juice. Cheers everybody, woo! Let's get this, let's get this party started today. She's here, yes. Let's see if I can get her to come in. There she is. The watermelon juice on my face. Let's, that's not a good look for me, guys. All right. Hey. Hey. How are you? I'm doing great. Look where I went. Beautiful. Wow. Where are you? Where are you located? I am in North Carolina. Gorgeous. What about yourself? I'm in New Jersey, but very near to the borderline of New York State. So we have a lot of wooded areas, and I have a beautiful yard loaded with trees. And, um, yeah, go hiking a lot here. It's right near the New York State Ramapo border, so... It's it's really a nice area, even though I have a daughter in Colorado and a son in Costa Rica. <laughs> Other two. Oh yeah, that's that's a. Do you visit her a lot? That's a place I definitely want to go. Yeah, actually, I'm going out there on Friday. My daughter's having a second child, so. Visiting my. Trying to get my headphones connected here so I can hear you better. Um, give me one second. Pause in the video. Tell me what you were saying. So your daughter lives in Costa Rica and... Yeah. Yeah, my, my my daughter lives in Durango, Colorado, and my son lives in Costa Rica. Yeah, he oh. has he has a vegan and raw food retreat center in Costa Rica. Wow, that's amazing. You must yeah. be very proud. I am very proud of what he's doing. He's growing all his own fruit trees and has a lush vegetable garden, you know, with the goal of becoming more and more sustainable. Absolutely. Yeah, we're doing the same thing. Yeah. Planting up. I'm not sure why my headphones are not working. Hold on one second. Technical difficulties. I can we'll just do it without them. Um, I think it might without them. What's that? I was just saying it may be better without them. I could hear you more clearly. Um, but I'm not sure if you hear me without the headphones, without the headset. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Good. So, did you raise your children raw vegan? Start from the beginning and tell us how you got on to the raw, because obviously you have 
truly inspired your children. I mean, us raw vegans, we need nature. They're living in both such beautiful places. And your son has made your, his life about helping others heal. So I'm guessing it all stemmed from you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the beginnings of your journey? Uh, well, my beginning actually goes back to before I was born, because my grandmother in 1921 had asthma and emphysema, and she was hospitalized, and doctors gave her the medications that they had back then, but she got much worse, and they told her she only had a few months to live. The emphysema was very serious. And wow. uh, at that time, a relative came to the hospital to visit her and brought her this little book called the Mucusless Diet Healing S System um, that came out in 1918. And it was a book about going to plant foods. The words vegan and raw, they didn't exist back then. Um, but my grandmother read that little book while she was in the hospital and she checked herself out and went home. Um, but interesting that most people, even when they're very ill, they are not willing to change their diet and lifestyle. Um, as Margaret Mead says, it's easier to change your religion than to change your diet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just want to say something yeah. on that note um, really quick to add to that. So my grandmother, um, she... Also, she had illness, she had cancer, breast cancer in both of her breasts, two different kinds, and someone, a doctor, someone brought up to her um, the raw diet, but at that time it was called the macro diet, and she said, no, 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 I'm not doing that, and she passed away, so go on. Yeah, that's, that's, usually, that's usually the situation, unfortunately. But my grandmother was highly motivated, and I'll tell you the reason. She may not have done it otherwise, but she was a single mom, and my father was only four years old. And she didn't have any relatives living nearby. So she did not know what was going to happen to my father. So she had this extra motivation. And she decided she was going to try it, and it was really impressive how it worked. Um, she went vegan. Um, like I said, vegan, the word didn't exist back then, but she went to plant foods and, uh, she had an amazing healing. So she was eating raw food most of the day. And in the evening she would have a salad and a little bit of steamed veggies. That was her diet. Um, and I remember her living with us and periodically she would come and stay. Uh, and I would hear her healing story. But my mother did not believe that that she could raise her children without animal protein. So my sister and I, we were raised on a mainstream animal-based diet. I had all of the childhood illnesses. I was like always on maintenance antibiotics. By the time I was an adolescent, I had full-blown cystic acne all over my face and my back. Um, and then it started with lots of digestive and gynecological issues. Uh, my monthly cycle, sometimes I got my period every other year going forward into my teenage and young adult years. And then I started going on drugs like prednisone. Um, they were trying to regulate my period. Like it just got worse. It didn't get better. Nothing improved. And even the skin issues um, the dermatologist told me it had nothing to do with the food I was eating. So I continued to eat my favorite foods, cheddar cheese and cheese doodles, <laughs> and binge all the time on them. And just my cystic acne was like so embarrassing and painful, these huge cysts on my face. This was went on for like 25 years, and my father and my grandmother always told me, it's all about what you're putting in your mouth. And I just listened to doctors and I didn't listen to them. And it wasn't until I was much older. You know, when we have our children, 
that's when we start to really make some changes because we want our kids to be healthy. We don't want our kids to suffer. And I was suffering, but I didn't see it clearly. So when my first child was born, I had already switched to vegetarian, but more for ethical reasons because I loved animals and I was starting to research what was really happening to animals and the animal, the multi-billion dollar animal industries of torture. And that really just, I, I was so upset with myself that I didn't listen to my father and my grandmother who were both ethical vegetarians who, who believed in animals and their rights. And so I did switch over to um, a plant-based lifestyle, but I didn't get into the health part until my second child was born. And we were already vegan. So um, I wasn't eating any animal foods. And I thought that getting off of dairy was like the most positive thing I had done. And I still do today. Like dairy is a main culprit of all disease. And it certainly helped to clear up my cystic acne. But then my son was still sick, even as a vegan. The first three years of his life, he had asthma and chronic ear infections. And I was so scared at night, his wheezing got really bad. And I would sleep with him on top of me. I was so scared I would lose him at night. Um, and that's what really made me get into the health part. And, and so in 1994, I switched to raw vegan. And that's when big changes started happening. Um, juicing and fruits and veggies. And he just like overnight began to heal and within like 10 to 11 months this life-threatening asthmatic um, and chronic ear infection situation was completely dissolved and so people say to me why are why am i so passionate about this for 33 years as a vegan and 28 years as a raw vegan why because it works that's why <laughs> So that's, that's pretty much, that's my story. And, uh, you know, we found a lot of healing. That's not to say I haven't made huge mistakes along the way. I did make a lot of big mistakes um, in going to vegan. You know, my son still had the ear infections and the asthma as a vegan. And that's because we were eating a lot of pasta and bread, a lot of processed stuff. Wasn't getting enough nutrition, not enough micronutrients. And yeah, change. That's when we saw progress. <laughs> and and Karen, I've found that even though we've actually, I, my daughter taught me so much even before she came to this, this out on the outside. Like these, you know, th these informations and things just started coming to me, and I just kind of learned. I learned about a natural birth right before I gave birth to her. I learned about, you know, this and that right before it was time. And so it's like, you know, she came to the universe to teach me these things. Um, but I, I find that even my daughter is not perfect, you know. Um, we had started her on raw vegan. We have her now on mostly fruit. Uh, like we went through this amazing transformation uh, on our juice fast where we thought like how do we feel so good like way even better than when we were raw um, just raw vegan now that we're high fruit raw vegan we feel even better let's do that for our daughter and so she still gets sick she gets runny nose uh, mucus cough fevers but this is because we can't expect to fix uh, generations and generations of uh, me um, mistakes in just such a short time. So when I see her with a runny nose and a cough and even a fever, I let it go. I treat with herbs um, and I know she's healing. She's healing these genetic weaknesses and uh, I'm really proud of that. So, yeah, nothing to feel bad about, you know, like we, 
we are we are correcting so much um hundreds and hundreds of years of mistakes that's right so i i'm just people are very meaning with many people are very impatient in the transition process they think that like after two weeks if everything isn't perfect and their digestion flowing and they're just feeling loads of energy that it doesn't work well think about what you've been doing for your whole life and even like what you're saying all of this generational information that gets passed into the bloodstream as the generations continue we have to deal with all that so you know the fact that your daughter is getting these you know runny noses and fever or whatever is actually you know and can be a sign of detoxification yeah that that's really what we believe and it's not all the time you know just normal right um yeah yeah but if, if you're giving these foods these are the most natural foods and we are eating our species specific diet this is what humans are supposed to eat. We are not carnivores. We are not designed to eat animals. We have a very long digestive tract. The animal food gets clogged in there. We are meant to eat foods that really serve our digestive system. And so fruits and greens. And vegetables. Yeah. So that's great that that was your intuition that that was your calling and that you went with your, with your gut feelings. Yeah. What do you have there? Is that like a watermelon juice? This is a watermelon juice. Beautiful. So yummy. Color. Got That's some cool. seeded watermelon today. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So nice. But um, I'm just beaming with pride while talking to you. You're just such an inspiration. Your children are so lucky. And uh, children really are our biggest motivations. It's like you've got to do it for them. Like it, you, they're depending on you. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I'd love to see your son's retreat one day and meet you in person. I just feel so happy knowing that you're out there doing your thing um and and it was the same for me Karen like it's uh my my family is very uh traditional they're really into meat and dairy and like I've watched my aunts cooking and they're like they put a whole stick of butter just in the topping and I'm like and they're worried about me, you know, where are you getting your protein jewels? And uh, it's, it's hard to be here. So it's just so lovely to connect with you and um, see other humans who, who get it. Because all you have to do is try it to know because you get the results. And you see the disease fade away. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've seen it over and over and over again. And that's why me like, too. The people ask me, like, why are you so passionate about this? How can you be doing this for decades? And I say, because I feel this amazing energy. You know, as I'm getting older, my energy does not diminish. Um, I'm not on meds. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sick and I'm, I'm have a high, very high quality of life. I know I'm not going to live forever. We're all going to go someday, but I want to at least have a long life potential and I want to have a good quality of life while I'm alive. I see some of my friends, a lot of my friends have already passed. And I was going to ask, um, you know, Aging is normal. We're supposed to get older. We're supposed to uh, age, but not in the way that it has been portrayed to us, where we're tired all the time and we're weak and uh, we need a bunch of pills next to us when we go to bed. What have you noticed, you know, like as you, how long have you been on your journey from what age? Um, and if you don't mind telling us how old you are now, uh, 
Yeah. And what is it like, the differences from you and watching your friends age? Well, I've lost some of my very closest friends. Um, and I've been, um, I started on the vegan path. I was like 30, let's see, like 36. And then I went, when I was, when I started raw vegan, I was 40. Um, and now I'm getting clo very close to six, age 68. Uh, and I feel I feel better than I did when I was 36, honestly. In terms you look wonderful. I see your pictures. You don't look your age. You're glowing. You're radiating youth and vibrancy. I mean, that's how I feel. And it's not that I'm not going to get older. I have some lines. <laughs> you know, we're all going to age. Um, but it's really how I feel and what my digestion is like. My digestion is more perfect than it's ever been before. Um, the foods I eat, I just digest really well. And that, you know, because I feel like my gut microbiome is strong and healthy, I feel like it leads to every system of my body. And because of that, I have this vibrant energy that most people are envious of but they're not willing to do what I do. And to me, it's so easy, so delicious, and so joyful. And once you begin to do it over a very short period of time, your taste buds change. And I love the way that plant foods taste. I don't need, like animal foods, like that cheddar cheese that I used to love, it's so stimulating. It's loaded with salt. There are also now many of the uh, companies that are producing cheese are adding aluminum to it to make it slice easier. And that's adding heavy metals into our body. And once we start adding a lot of heavy metals, we start having brain fog, um, attention deficit, autism, Alzheimer's. So why would we want to put something so toxic into our body, plus animal food, especially dairy, is so mucus forming, so acidic. Even when I think about it, it repulses me. It doesn't make me yeah. attracted to it. I am attracted to fruits and vegetables. And, you know, some people say, well, you know, what, what does it for you? Why do you have that attraction? Well, that's why I write about it. I write about it because it does so much for me and it helps so many others. Um, and I just like, I just want to show you, like, this is my first book. Creating Healthy Children. It's won numerous awards. It's, it's Creating Healthy Children Through Attachment Parenting and Raw Foods. And so by attachment parenting, I'm just talking about um, the parent really being there for the child mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And that means trying to have a natural childbirth. Now, it's not always 100% possible. But I believe the majority of time, if the parent is really wanting to have a natural birth plan, that they can make it happen. The majority of time. Um, and oh, yeah. breastfeeding, like mother's milk is meant for the child, for the human baby. I'm still breastfeeding at yeah. two and a half years old. Wonderful. Wonderful. So that's attachment parenting. Because when we attach to our child and especially hold them against our skin, it's reducing cortisol, the stress hormone, and increasing oxytocin, the love hormone. And isn't that what we want for our children? We want oxytocin, the love hormone. And so attachment parenting with breastfeeding and holding and skin contact and eye contact and just being very present for our child that makes a well-adjusted human being. That creates mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And then there's also the, the food part of it. And uh, whole plant and raw foods are definitely the way to go. So like you said that you were inspired by me, I am also inspired by you. Because yeah. I love when young people get this and they honor their children. They are 
um, believing in their own self-worth and they follow through with the best diet and lifestyle and follow attachment parenting, which you're doing. Um, and then as a result, that book went all around the world, even though I don't know how to market. <laughs> Just by osmosis, it went all the way around the world. And my readers asked for more recipes. I had recipes in chapter 18, but most of the Creating Healthy Children book is, is the why part of it. So I created a recipe book. I have one of the families on the cover who has come to my classes over the years. My kids were already adults when I wrote this book and I wanted a family with younger kids. So I, I asked them and, uh, and the book is Raw Vegan Recipe Fun for Families. And that has 115 easy and mostly well-combined recipes. Um, and then I, my third book is a book that I wrote recently, it took me five years to write, 29 pages of research in the book. And I have been in a, <laughs> a vegan and raw food health coach since 1998. I've also been a speech and language pathologist for 43 years. And the last uh, 20 years of, of, of that um, career, I worked with children with autism in an autism continuum program in the public schools. And what I found was that speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, wonderful practices. However, if the child is eating chicken nuggets and being reinforced with potato chips and M&Ms, we're not going to see the progress. But if we change the diet and the lifestyle and get these families on a healthy plant-powered diet, we can see tremendous changes in the child in all areas. And that's why I wrote this, this book, Heal and Prevent Autism, Natural Solutions That Work. And I got a foreword from Dr. T. Colin Campbell, who is the co-author of the longest nutrition study ever done, 27-year nutrition study, the China study. And so I really believe very strongly in a raw vegan lifestyle. Um, and I've seen so much progress in not only my own kids and in my own health and vibrancy, but also... I, I've just seen in my in the people I've worked with over the years, and I'm sure you're seeing that as well. That when people yeah. make these changes, um, I've seen it in people with diabetes, completely getting off the insulin and turning their situation around, losing weight, um, improving the hormones. And I and I have a free Facebook group called Plant Foods Weight Loss Hormonal and Gut Health. And it's, I do free Facebook Lives every week. And it's a community where people can come in and ask questions about how to lose weight successfully with plants, how to balance their hormones, get the gut health that they want. Because in today's world, it's just all this focus on diets that don't work in the long term. Like keto and paleo, they may work temporarily because people are getting off the junk food and the processed food. So in that way, yes, but all this animal food, all that saturated fat, no way. So, yeah, so I believe firmly in this way of eating. So you are just so needed. You're just so needed, and we are so blessed to have you here. You're an earth angel. Um <laughs> Because I, you know, I was a teacher before I became a, uh, I started my own health business where I help people to do uh, a juice fast. I'm a juice fast coach and then trans transition to raw vegan. Um, I help with parenting and uh, a natural way and all that stuff. Um, and it's been really, really fun. And But before that, I was a kindergarten teacher. And... So, like, there was a class of autistic children in the classroom next to me. And in my heart, I knew that we can heal these children. We just needed, to, like, they're not treating the right, they're not hitting the right aspect here. 
it's diet, diet, diet. Like they're just, you know, giving them drugs and uh, therapy, other therapies and stuff or, and the regular treatments in Western medicine. And I was just like hoping someone like you existed because I feel that it's met with a lot of resistance. People are like, no, 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 the diet really can't fix everything. And like, it was so hard for me to work in the school system. I saw children with diabetes on the insulin pump and their, and their parents are telling them to eat pop tarts every half an hour at school. And I'm like, this is not, you know, the way. So how do you, what happens when you come in and you're talking about the natural diet? Are you usually accepted or are you met with a lot of resistance? And if so, how do you deal with that? Well, in the schools, initially, when I started to, um, to really push diet with, with the kids and I was coming in making green smoothies with them and I was uh, even doing language activities around fruit and vegetables and the kids were loving it. A lot of the teachers and therapists said, oh, the kids aren't going to be interested in what you're doing. And then they were. Then they loved what I was doing and they wanted to eat that stuff. And kids especially love fruit. We have natural sweet receptors on our tongue. The kids like a Tasting adore. it right now. <laughs> yeah. And so they, they absolutely love those activities. But there was one therapist in particular who really put down what I was doing. And was yeah, that's so brave. Arms. Like it sounds, it sounds so simple. I came in and I did green smoothies. Who would get mad at you for that? But you have no idea, guys. People get mad at you for this stuff. Right, Karen? It's that's right. They <laughs> And finally, uh, there were some speech therapists. I did have a wonderful speech department where I was. So, um, and I'm also accredited in feeding therapy. So there were some teachers who actually asked me to come in and help with their kids who were finicky eaters. And a lot of kids with autism, they'll only eat chicken nuggets or they'll only eat, like there was one girl who would only eat refined chocolate pudding. Like her mother was really concerned. And this teacher asked me to help this girl to get her to eat more foods. Now, of course, I wasn't going to give her animal food or junk processed food. So I started with berries, organic berries. And I couldn't get her to eat anything else. So what I said was, okay, I'm going to use desensitization. And I'm going to take a berry I'm going to um, puree it and make it into a syrup. And I'm going to put just a little bit of it into her chocolate pudding. And I did. And I kept adding more every day while I also would do acti sensory activities with her around berries. So we would do art projects with berries and they're very colorful. So we could make really pretty designs using berries on paper. Um, I would have her smell do the smelling berries I would have her watch me so visually watching me and another therapist who I brought in just eating berries together without asking her to buy berries then I would um, take a little bit of strawberry and ask her if she might want to lick it and she licked it without eating it so we did all different kinds of things with berries at the same time that every time I saw her, I was adding a little bit more berry to that awful chocolate pudding that she was eating. So meanwhile, I mean, she kept eating that, which, you know, of course I wasn't happy about, but we were having more and more berries. And as we got to the point where she really liked berries a lot, I stopped with the chocolate pudding and she was just eating the berries pureed and she did not notice that the chocolate was not in there. I did put a little bit of carob to give it a chocolatey flavor, but she started to accept it because she already had the taste of the berries. And that just led to the love of other fruits. Um, and Incredible. So we did do some sensory things around that. Um, I had you know, 
child also. I, I actually, I actually make a chocolate pudding for my daughter out of avocados, bananas, and cacao powder. And she has that every single day. Like, I'm not sure that I meant for it to be eaten this often, but yeah, she, she has it with other fruits. She'll dip strawberries in there, but I'm just so impressed. You're just like an angel. Like, we really need, we really need you here uh, with working with the parents, working with the children. That is, you know, the scariest um, time when your kids are sick and you know from firsthand experience. It is. And you're just like so brave to come in with your work. And yeah, I'm really uh scary when a child is really sick and parents don't know what to do. And I remember when my child was sick with asthma and we were in and out of hospitals. And I don't want any parent to have to experience that. Pretty much the worst thing that you can, you, you just can't calm down when that's happening. So, yeah, it, it's so crazy that we just don't know that the human body will really heal anything as long as you're eating nature's foods and, um, you know, cutting out the, the chemicals. It, it's really yeah. crazy. Someone, someone recently told me that these processed foods – They've only really been around for 150 years and they've like destroyed the human race that's been around for, you know, however long we've been around in just 150 years. Yeah. The, the rise of autism and um, all these cancers and heart disease and actually life expectancy has been getting shorter, right. even though they don't really make it look like that. Life expectancy really is getting much shorter. Like you had asked me initially about my own generation and people who I've been friends with and what, you know, and what about me compared to them? Well, a lot of my very, very close friends who I've known for many years passed away. Um, one of them, um, she just didn't believe me when I told her that like the chips weren't good for her. She would just like devour bags of chips. And I was really concerned at the amount of bags of chips I saw her go through. And she ended up, um, I mean, and she also had smoked and she would go on and off with the smoking. Um, and she ended up dying of an asthma attack, a very sudden asthma attack just killed her like that. Um, and another friend who was kind of interested in what I did, and she dabbled in it a little bit. She even came to some of my events. Um, but she really didn't think that she had to do it herself. She thought, like, that was just for me, and she thought it was cute. Um, but she wasn't really willing to make a lot of changes herself. Um, the only thing that she did do was get more exercise. And some people think that exercise is enough. But I can tell you, exercise is not enough in and of itself if you're not changing your diet and your lifestyle. Um, and when she got older, she started having hot flashes. I've never had a hot flash. I've gone into menopause completely uneventfully. I have never had any of the... Um, I, I, well, I had insomnia when I was younger, when I was eating junk. I, I don't have insomnia. I sleep like a baby. Um, but she was having insomnia. She was having hot flashes. Um, she just overall energy drop. And I tried to help her, but I don't push myself on people. She wasn't really open yeah. to help. And she started taking hormone replacement. And those estrogen replacements are very toxic. They cause all kinds of cancers and heart problems and dementia. Well, soon after she started taking them, she got, she got uterine cancer. And she died a couple of years ago. Um, and I uh, had another friend who ended up having a blood disease and died of a heart attack at a really young age, age 44. Um, but I've lost, and, and then another friend as well. 
who went to uh, an animal food diet and um, and ended up having problems and, and died of cancer. So the chronic diseases are very often linked to estrogen, which is the hormone that is predominant in animal food. It's at an excess in animal food. And so as we're getting older, if we're taking in too much estrogen, which is wonderful for a baby, you know, a baby is getting a lot of that when they're like, your daughter is still getting all that estrogen from your breast milk, which is what she needs. Um, and that's really meant for someone who's growing very rapidly. But, you know, at a certain age, like we're not growing anymore. We're getting older and we need less estrogen. And a high estrogen diet is the cause of all these cancers, especially like breast cancer and prostate cancer. And so that's, that's what I'm seeing. And I really, I take it in. Um, I'm very um, conscious and aware and I do a lot of research. And that's why I write these books because I want people to see what's really happening out there and to see the research. And it's out there. And, the, and if you look into the medical literature, it's very clear uh, that a plant-powered lifestyle, whole plant food, and even a lot of raw food. I found research for my autism book about raw food, about the benefits of raw food. So it's, it's just the way to go. And I wish that I was doing it um, as, as young as you are. I mean, you're, you're starting off at a in a great path and with your family, and, um, and you won't regret it. Shoot, hold on one second. I think I lost the sound there for a second. It's my fault. I got an incoming call. Um, let me see if I can fix that. Say something. Let me see if I can hear you again. Now? Perfect. I guess it just... Uh, I couldn't hear for a second when I got a call, but yeah... Um, it's really wild what people will do out there uh, because we've lost all faith in our bodies and we think we, we are uh, fear-based from Western medicine. Um, I've seen women have their breasts removed because uh, they were afraid that they had cancer in their genetics. They didn't even have cancer. They just got them removed because they were so worried that this was going to happen to them. And um, it's, it's, not, it's not possible that they can escape their fate, but yet they're shoveling in, like you said, just the chips, just chips, Karen. Like, they might think that we're crazy, but, like, listen, when I had a friend the other day, and he's on the journey, too. Uh, he's got a whole family. They're trying to be raw. They're eating uh, very clean compared to a normal family. They're eating a lot of fruit. Um, <clears throat> but he was like, Jules, if you want to cheat a little bit, just go and get these chips called taro chips. And I, he's like, they're made from only herbs. So I got really excited. And in the store, I found them. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, maybe some chips I could actually eat. I turn them around. I look at the ingredients. And in there is malodextrone natural flavors. Sure, there's herbs in there, but um, there's also a lot of drugs in there, which is what I call the chemicals. Chemicals, drugs, same thing. Addictive drugs in your food and changes your chemistry. So I immediately put the bag down. I'm like, I can't eat these. These have got drugs in them. But um, it was nice thinking maybe I could eat some chips from the store for a minute. Because once you realize... 90% of the grocery store is literally man-made poisons that is going to affect you. And then, yeah, like when I was teaching, teachers would just come up to me all the time. Oh, you know, hey, yeah, how are you? Uh, I have an autoimmune disease. I have asthma. I have this. I can't, you know, I can't do many things because I got this. And it's like you gauge the... You gauge the environment, and you're like, well, you can heal that. And you see how they respond. If you get any interest, but usually I'm met with, 
you know, like whatever, you can't heal this. I got, I'm just sick. And um, I've even had a friend, she, she struggles terribly with depression, bipolar. And I'm like, you can cure that. You can cure that. You don't need to be on all these junk pills. They're making you sick. And the McDonald's is making you sick. And, and she's just like, no, Jules, this is the way that I am. This is how I was born. And it's so hard to deal with sometimes. Um, you seem like you deal with it really well. Sometimes I feel really sad about it, but I just keep doing what I'm doing. And it brings me joy when the people that are ready to hear it come to me. And, um, and I do see that because Karen, my story is different. I didn't have a physical health problem where I was trying to heal anything. I was an addict. So I had a mental health problem. I had depression. I had an terrible anxiety. I, I needed to like have a drink before talking to anybody. Um, I had low self-esteem mood swings, uh, just all kinds of problems with my, my brain. Um, just, yeah, mainly anxiety, depression, and mood swings, and struggling to cope with life. Uh, my mother is a pharmaceutical drug addict. Um, I know she watches my stuff, so I, I love her very much. And it, it, she got put on this crap when she was very young. Um, and they didn't know how to deal with her issues that she was having. And then she just got addicted. She doesn't know any other way. Um, and I think it really messed up our relationship. And so as I've been watching all of my fellow humankind just be kind of tortured by these things, you're just a beacon of light uh, to come in and say, look, it's, you know, it, it is that easy. You can heal. You, you just need to give it a chance. And I didn't believe it either. You know, I had, I had all these problems. I was a terrible alcoholic and I was on pharmaceuticals, just like I'd learned from my parents. And, um, I, my life just got to a breaking point, uh, at 29 where I was like, I crashed my car and I was like, I just can't do this anymore. And rehab didn't work. AA didn't work. Um, but, Changing my diet worked. I changed my diet and suddenly I didn't want those poisons in my body. I, I just, I went, I was vegetarian a long time. I never understood milk or uh, meat. I never understood meat from a little child, young child. I was like, I can't eat that. I really don't want to eat that. So as soon as I found out I didn't need it, I was like, ah, oh, thank God. I'm not going to eat that anymore. And then I went vegan. And then I went raw vegan and I just kept feeling better and better and my addictions went away. And I couldn't believe it. I had been an addict for 12 years. And I was like, I just don't want any alcohol. I can, I, to this day, I go in bars. I went to a brewery this weekend. I got a kombucha. I, I danced. I had fun, you know, like I didn't need all, I don't, I'm not an addict anymore. I actually, I know a lot of people will say that they're an addict forever, but like, and I, I mean, I always have to be careful, but I don't feel like an addict. I, I'm so excited. Like you said, I, I'm an addict to my fruits and veggies. Yeah. Yeah. And that's natural. That's natural to the human. And so like you have basically healed yourself on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually by changing your diet and your lifestyle. And I've seen that happen. Um, this one woman uh, came to one of my, I, I have a five week program and a woman came to me with her husband. He came as support. She was on Prozac and she wanted to get pregnant. She was really scared being on such a, you know, a, ser a serious drug there and getting pregnant, but she was getting older. She wanted to have a child. And she was like, I know I have to change my diet. And she was actually one of the speech therapists in the department that I worked at at the school. Um, and she found out that I was a vegan health coach. So she asked me, she said, would this help me? I've been 
filled with anxiety and depression for many, many years. I, I've been told that it's never going to go away and that I just need to stay on this. And the doctor even told me to go ahead and try to get pregnant and it would be okay. But she was like, I don't feel comfortable being on such a dangerous drug. So she had this intuition. It was really awesome that she did have that intuition. So she came and her husband came as support to my class. Um, she ended up changing her diet. She didn't go totally raw, but she went very high raw. Um, lot, you know, mostly raw food, a little bit of cooked food, but whole plants, whole plant cooked food. And she was able to get off the Prozac. She got pregnant had a beautiful childbirth and she's just doing great. So wow. it can happen for people who, you know, it just shows that the gut and gut health is very much connected with the whole nervous and neurological system and the brain. And if we start to do it at any time, we start a detoxification and fruits and vegetables help the body to detoxify and it's just a no fact. And the research is out there. A lot of people like they'll come up to me and they'll say, Karen, there's no science backing you up. And that is not true. Take a look at my books. You'll see the science. And that's why I go out of my way to research the science behind plant foods. And if you look in the medical. It's so important too, because people want that. They don't, you know, I just need my my intuition and my instincts and the feelings I already know, you know, but people need the, that don't have that experience. But, um, yeah, if I eat cooked food, cause I'm not perfect. So I've eaten cooked food. Uh, and, and I get all my problems right back. Like I'll feel down and I'll feel sluggish and I'll feel heavy and I'll feel uh, negative towards the world. Everything will just change for me. So it's not worth it to me, you know? I'm not saying I'll, I'll be perfect for the rest of my life, but I have a strong, strong desire to stay happy. And uh, I enjoy eating my foods. So I do have to get going because I actually have a client um, coming up here. But I have just enjoyed talking to you so much today. You're so inspiring. And I, where can we buy your books? How can we work? How can people work with you? How can they find you? If you know, aside from social media? Well, here on, um, well, here on Instagram, um, people can always direct message me at super healthy raw. Um, but my websites are super healthy children.com. And that's where you can see all my books, like creating healthy children and the autism book and the recipe book and other eBooks um, at superhealthychildren.com. And my other website is feelfabulouswithfood.com. And on that, um, on that website, um, if anybody is interested in health coaching or anybody is interested in becoming part of my vegan certification course, I certify coaches in vegan and raw food so that they can go out and spread this message along with us and become health coaches. And I've been doing that since 2015. It's a full course online at Feel Fabulous with Food. And we meet live every week with me um, on Zoom every Thursday. So my students meet with me and ask all their questions and also get updated information and um, and marketing and and all kinds of information. Okay, amazing. I will yeah. definitely be checking out all those resources, Karen, and I really, really hope to do this again and um, to meet you at the Fruit Festival. I know you go, so I'm oh, hoping to make it this year. Ooh. Yes, I know. I, have, I find that I just want to hang out with people who are on the on the fruit and on the raw vegan lifestyle it just makes things so much easier you know you will have so much in common already and you're like so you wonderful. know you don't have to explain yourself it's so wonderful it's like the best place it's like my highlight of the year in terms of events it is the best and people have told me it's really hard to leave 
Absolutely. And for anybody here who is thinking of going to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, um, I have a $100 discount code of, um, of raw party. It's like lowercase, no space in between words, raw party. So if you do register for at the website, the Woodstock Fruit Festival, Dot com and put raw party in, you'll get uh, $100 off for each person. Yeah, I'm so awesome. Excited. I'll definitely be trying taking you up on that. Yeah. All right, Karen, I'll give you a big hug. Yeah, thank you so much, Jules. It was so great talking to you. And I am so excited that I will have the opportunity to see you soon. Yes, I can't wait to give you a big real hug. I'm so happy that you're here doing what you're doing. And, and um, I know you're not stopping anytime soon. So thank you for everything you do. And thank you for meeting with me today. It has been a true pleasure. My vibrations are so high now, thanks to you. Thank you so much. And I'm just so excited that you're out there <laughs> spreading this valuable message and helping people get to their next level of health. See you next time. Bye. Bye. And thank you to everybody who joined us. <laughs> thank you, guys. We love you. Bye.